Hi, I'm Kevin Tracy, and this week I'm checking out a free open source software project called Paint.net and reviewing its functionality in creating the high resolution pixel art that I typically create in Microsoft Paint. For this review, I'm drawing a self portrait for my Twitch and YouTube profile picture. If you find yourself enjoying this video, let me know by hitting that like button and consider subscribing. I'd love it if you joined our growing community. I'm basing this on a selfie that I took at an airport, either LAX in Los Angeles or McCarran in Las Vegas, which was already my YouTube channel's profile picture. I don't know, I I've always loved this picture since I took it. I after rushing off the airplane, my hat was tilted sideways, my shirt was probably unbuttoned one button too far, and my headphones were in, and the crazy awesome beard was going on, and I mean, what's not to love about this? I kind of look like P-Thug from Chromio. Anyway, last week I was talking to Alpha of Pixis about my terrible Twitch streams, and among a great many other recommendations that he made, he suggested creating a cartoon version of my face for a profile picture. Of course, my first inclination was just to use the Kevin character from the MS Paint comic. However, after thinking about it, I've never really done a self-portrait in my high-resolution pixel art style before, so that's what we're doing! And yeah, I do feel like tracing the outline here is kind of like cheating. But on the other hand, I'm not selling this art, and as part of my review of Paint.net, it seems like a very valid excuse to begin using layers. <laughs> and holy crap, layers are awesome! As you may be aware, I have a workaround for creating layers in Microsoft Paint by using multiple files and transparent selections. And over the years, it's proven to be a reliable and effective method of getting the functionality of layers into Microsoft Paint. However, having access to the layers in just one file, being able to toggle them off and on, adjust their opacity, and even select their blending mode is just incredible. Another benefit of Paint.net is the software's ability to recognize an alpha channel or a transparent background. I think I would appreciate this the most when creating sprites to be overlaid over a background in a separate program someplace else, or especially for me as a web designer, in the process of creating graphics for the internet. If I'm creating pixelated graphics for the web and need a transparent area, I've been having to export my file from Microsoft Paint to GIMP and then adding an alpha channel there. The most useful feature if you're a professional artist, at least when compared to the XP version of Microsoft Paint, are the nearly unlimited undos. Undoing in Paint.net not only gives you the ability to go back, but for most shapes and lines, you're able to actually go back and move or adjust them too. Although over the past 15 years of doing this, I've become really good at not needing more than three undos or a four if you use the right click trick, which I probably should mention in a future MS Paint tips and tricks video, but oh man, oh, my dog just farted. Oh, oh man. Poor th oh, he just walks out of the room too. Oh, poor folks. Well, I think the final, <laughs> I think the final good thing about this software is the color selection. This is actually the tool I'm most familiar with. I've had a copy of Paint.net for quite some time because this is typically the tool that I use when deciding what colors my transparent Teddy Roosevelt ghost needs to be in the MS Paint comic. I'll load the background in Paint.net, followed by a pre-drawn Teddy Roosevelt in a separate layer, and then I would just kind of adjust the opacity and merge the layers together, pick up the color that I needed, separate the layers, and move it around again, and doing things that way. And you might be wondering, why don't you just draw him in Paint.net? Well, there's two reasons for that. First and foremost, it's the MS Paint comic, not the Paint.net comic. And that might not sound like a good answer, but at comic conventions, a lot of people will ask me before buying the comic, did you really draw all of this in Microsoft Paint? And I'd either have to be dishonest and say yes, or go on a long list of exceptions and talk myself out of a sale in the process. I think it's important to keep drawing this in MS Paint. Secondly, and I think more significantly, the actual drawing tools in Paint.net kind of suck in comparison with MS Paint. The circle tool is a complete freaking mess, throwing pixels down in a very non-circular fashion, and seeing as how the circle oval tool is probably the shape that I use the most for my characters' heads, eyes, speech bubbles, and more, the quality of the comic would take a nosedive if I were to use it regularly. Also, even more significantly, I think, the line and curve tool is just kind of a pain to use. Now, I see what they're trying to do by adding handles to the line in Paint.net. The curve tool in MS Paint took months, maybe even years of practice for me to learn how to use it as well as I do. And despite drawing in Microsoft Paint and using the curve tool heavily over the past 15 years, I still actually couldn't tell you exactly how it works, but it's a masterpiece of software engineering once you master it. 
The handle system in Paint.net comes with the advantage of being able to adjust an almost perfect line into a perfect line, and, as mentioned before, reactivate it through the undo command. There are times, especially with the curve tool, that my line is just off by a couple pixels here or there, and being able to adjust its position or shape after placing the line would be really nice. But like the circles, the calculations that decide where to place the curve are just off and no amount of tweaking is going to fix it most times. You'll have to go back in and clean it up manually with the pencil tool or the eraser tool or something. Plus, even more frustrating is that after placing a line, you can't simply start a new line at the end of the one you just created because there's a handle there and clicking at the end of that line will drag the handle, not start a new line. This is unbelievably frustrating because it's contrary to the way that we draw in real life. If I have a line on a piece of paper and I'm told to draw another line connected to the end of it, I'm going to have to start my second line from the end of that existing line, not from where I feel my line would probably end out in space someplace and then try to stop exactly at the point where that existing line ends. It's counterintuitive and less accurate both when drawing by hand and when drawing on the computer. And this is particularly frustrating when you're trying to draw a ragged but continuous shape, such as with this portrait with my beard. Something that's probably a feature, but was definitely a pain in the butt for me coming from MS Paint is that almost everything, not just the lines, everything stayed active after it was created, which not only meant that it could be moved, but it also meant that you could change its color. I can see the merit for this especially with shapes and lines. However, using a handle for the fill tool is just, oh, irritating beyond belief. When I use the paint bucket or fill tool, whatever you want to call it, I have the right color selected more than 99 times out of 100. In the off chance that I'm wrong or just playing with the colors, I'll change the color and fill the area in again. The problem with paint.net is that the first thing I do when drawing anything is select the color. When the handle is active on my previously filled area and I select a new color, it changes the color of what I just filled in. This might not seem like a big deal, but when you do high resolution pixel art, you spend a lot of time zoomed in and moving around a lot. There were several times where I changed my active color and unintentionally changed a fill color off screen someplace on the canvas where I couldn't notice it or see it until I zoomed out and was just left irritated that something that I thought was done was now suddenly the wrong color and I had to try figuring out what color it was again. I assume there's probably a button on the keyboard I could press to deactivate the handles like the space button or enter or escape, but the fingers on my left hand are figuratively glued to the control Z, X, C, and V keys, which handle all of my undoing, cutting, copying, and pasting. Having to click another button to deactivate what I just created is adding a lot of clicks to my workflow. Now, I know Paint.net can do a lot of stuff that I haven't even touched on here, all of which I'm sure are features that are not available in Microsoft Paint. However, I really don't need those features for my high resolution pixel art. And while I'm sure I could get used to the handle system, especially in exchange for the layers and opacity, Paint.net's fatal flaw is just how it calculates curves for the line tool and especially for the circle tool. For what it's worth, Microsoft Paint's lines that are two or more pixels thick have a little bump or a tail that kind of shows up at either end of them, which is also hugely annoying. Circles that are an odd number of pixels in width will also sometimes have a single pixel that kind of busts out the left side, but fixing that stuff is actually really simple when compared to touching up a curve or even worse, trying to make a symmetrical oval 300 by 280 pixels large. Finally, the cursors feel a bit less accurate. In Microsoft Paint, the cursors are incredibly sharp, indicating exactly which pixel you're going to be modifying. In Paint.net, the cursors are sometimes rounded over a bit, making precise work, especially with the pencil tool, more difficult. Also, the black part of the cursors in Microsoft Paint are actually a negative of what color they're over. This makes lining up your cursor with an existing horizontal or vertical grouping of pixels incredibly easy. However, from what I could tell, the cursors in Paint.net are simply opaque, blocking what's under them and making it more difficult to hit that exact pixel you're looking for. Still, despite these complaints, I think the self-portrait actually came out really well. 
And I certainly don't mean to say you can't create wonderful, beautiful art in Paint.net. You obviously can. Looking at this finished product, it's impossible to tell that it was created in Paint.net instead of Microsoft Paint or some other pixel art program, which is really good. And I'm sure that if I spent 15 years on Paint.net, switching over to Microsoft Paint would feel unbelievably primitive. My criticism of Paint.net is not meant to say that the program is junk. Heck, it's free, open source software, and it does a lot of things better than Microsoft Paint, which has been developed since the mid-1980s in Windows version 1. So the developers here are clearly holding their own. And if you are a Microsoft Paint artist but find yourself limited by the lack of tools, I do strongly recommend checking out Paint.net because it does a lot of things well and being a feature-rich pixel art tool is definitely one of them. At the time of me creating this video, it's August 2019 and I'm using Paint.net version 4.2.1. If a Paint.net developer, advocate, or supporter sees this video and thinks I'm using the software wrong, please, by all means, let me know in the comments. I'm relatively new to Paint.net and I haven't logged a lot of time in this tool. I'd love to find out that I'm doing something wrong and there's a lot more functionality that I could be getting for the type of art that I create. Also, if a future version of the software comes out that addresses any of the problems that I mentioned in this video, please, by all means, share that with me too. I would love to revisit this software and do another review highlighting the improvements in Paint.net. I love open source projects, and I really do wish the Paint.net team the very best as they continue improving the software. And if you want to see that video when it comes out, or if you want to catch my future art videos, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. I would love it if you joined our growing community. And yeah, this really did turn out well. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, hit that like button and I hope you consider subscribing. If you dislike the video, please tell me why in the comments. I actually do really appreciate everyone's feedback. I do read all of the comments, even if you're acting like a jerk about it. Hey, 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 before you go, on the left is a playlist of my time-lapse pixel art videos and on the right is a video that YouTube thinks you'll like based on all their nerdy computer science stuff. Thanks for watching and have a great week.